what do you get the most egotistical person in the entire universe, right? What do you get the person who is totally in love with himself? Another one of him. That's exactly, it's like the cat from Red Dwarf, right? Oh, what's it? I was watching, let me pull up this bit, this clip from the making of Invasion of Time, which I can't remember what it was. I just remember it being very pertinent. Oh, wrong thing. Doink. Very pertinent to today, right? Oh, yes. Okay. I wish, wish, wish people would, uh, would heed this, right? From uh, uh, people who really knew and understood Doctor Who. So we go over here, doink. Uh, doink. It's the fourth Doctor. It's the Invasion of Time. But that's the making of the Invasion of Time. Not Invisible Enemy. Wait, 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 on the wrong thing. Uh, duh, duh. Uh, invasion of Time. There we are. Uh, not the Rising War, Gallifrey, Gallifrey, out of time. There you go, doink. This is 100% correct, I think. Yeah, okay, so they're talking about her marrying off Andred. You know, but to make her fall in love with the Time Lord Guard, you know, beautiful as Chris Tranchell. Was is I'm sure, um, it it just wouldn't have been my choice for Leela's exit. There was never really the time to build up a relationship between her and uh... right. Okay, so here's the important part. What and like you know why wasn't there more of a relationship in there? Okay, one second. And, and, and the guy she was going to stay with because there wasn't anything written in. There wasn't actually a scene where. Um, one captured the other or one, anything. There wasn't a romantic scene as such. So it could only be done very gently. Well, the little bits of love interest that we put in between... Uh, OK, let me zoom forward a bit because they're going to copyright zap me. Uh, yeah, so they it wasn't written in the script. Not seen. Let's face it, Doctor Who is not, is not a great place for love stories. You know, it's not... Exactly! Doctor Who is not a great place for love stories. Yes, you are correct in that, sir. Doctor Who is not a great place for love stories. So maybe having a whole episode in a Bridgerton uh, uh, cosplay world, uh, with Bridgerton cosplay, about the Doctor wanting to get a snog in his leg over, right? What's the time? 9.29, I've got to remember that. Doctor Who, d romance doesn't really go naturally with Doctor Who, right? It's just, you know kind of falls apart when you when you start pulling out bits of its dna it starts falling apart it's like a game of kaplunk i watched the first episode of batman cape crusader today and um man it's exactly it's exactly the same problem right again by removing the asexuality the innocence from doctor Who, and there was a lot of innocence to it right and yeah that that's the problem with having jinx monsoon in it it's not so fucking innocent when you have a you know a performer on who cross-dresses and talks about losing condoms up his ass, right? I'm not up for that. It loses innocence when you do that. And I think there was an innocence about Doctor Who which, were, which, made, which was better, right? There was no need for, like, uh, sexuality and love uh, stories. Well, mainly sexuality. Like, you know, Rogue was all about sex. It wasn't about love, right? Um... I was going with that. So, uh, uh, yeah, so I just stood up. I completely, completely lost my, uh, my, my, my train of thought. I'm with it. Uh, wrote all about sex, not about love. It, oh, yes. When you start putting part of the DNA or something, it like it just kind of doesn't work anymore. And you, if you don't do that, okay, I think Batman, uh, Kate Crusader is a much better example, right? So I, I watched it and it's got a female penguin who is very different from the original penguin. And Commissioner Gordon and uh, and Barbara Gordon are black, right? So it really didn't. Firstly, I found the female penguin just kind of repulsive. I was like, ugh, ugh. It really that that I had that kind of reaction, yeah, you know, straight away, right? And it really was like that. Um. So uh, and then uh, it didn't. It, yeah. Here's why it didn't work, right? And here's why it's not working in Doctor Who either. It's that if you want to do a reinvention of Batman, right, and, uh, you know, change, you know, do stuff with changing the race and the genders or whatever, 
I'm not necessarily opposed to that, but they, they didn't do it well, right? Hey, the to make, way to make this work is do a black Batman. They want to do that show. They should have had a black Batman and have it be its own thing, right? And I think that would have made it work better. Because you've got a very, very traditional white Batman, all the change elements don't work. They don't look race and culture and uh, gender all have a, like a size and a shape, and they fit together to create a story, to create a, a genre, to create a uh, uh, a storytelling world, right? And when you start changing randomly, changing the the blocks, it just nothing fits together properly, right? Uh, uh, <laughs> Dr. Adam said, he's going to buy two, two copies of, of the, the NAF Doctor. Absolutely. But so, yeah, that's why I really knew it. And you know, Darren uh, Aronofsky had a, a proposal for Black Man, Batman when he was black and he uh, he was a mechanic. And so it was just a very different Batman. And I think that's what they really should have gone for, right? And that when you change the Batman, you could have had, like, a totally different show uh, uh, coming out of the original one. And it, they're doing exactly the same things with Doctor Who. They're changing things that are very, I think, uh, vital to the core of it. Again, the innocence, the asexuality. Uh, and, and it never, like, we never needed it before, right? We didn't need it. And, and it just doesn't work, right? And also having Shooty being very gay, very, very gay. And, like, you know, it, it, it's, these, the, you, once you change the shapes of those building blocks, they don't fit together properly anymore. Which is what, what, what we got. Uh, Connor, I see some reviews he said doesn't even suggest that Batman solves the crimes. I only saw the first episode because I really wanted to see what uh, what it was like, right? But um, and the, the real tragedy of it is it's real quality in terms of reduction, right? Looks fantastic, it's put together well. Uh, Carswell, look, Mini Driver plays the Penguin, and I don't know, like, oh, you know, what you could have done is say Batman has to move to a different city for uh, a year or two or whatever. And these are these are the different... You have a different penguin in where, where it's Central City or he's in Paris or wherever he is, right? And you could have a black Commissioner Gordon, Barbara uh, Gordon, um, whatever, for fulfilling those roles is what, what I'm saying. And you could have made your own thing. And it, once you build it from the ground up, it fits together properly, Right. Uh, uh, you know, that's really what I, that's why I always think it's good to like just re keep recreating things. Like, I think Indiana Jones, you know, wouldn't work if it was Doc Savage, right? Which it was a rip off, anyway. So, that's really the problem with Doctor Who. Also, the insane, intensely narcissistic nature of shooting, right? He's just so like, it's all about me. Hey, I look good. You know what? I look good. I look good too. Hey, I look, hey, do you fancy a blow dog? Yes, I do. Oh. Again, what do you get the narcissist who has everything? Uh, uh, himself. Yeah, <laughs> you thought interview the thirteenth doctor is back. Really, I know, and we're all like, why? How? Uh, exclusive behind the scenes secrets with shooting out with Millie Gibson and Russell D. Davis. Don't really care. Don't really care. Uh, Megan Man and the Souls. Fifteenth Doctor figure. Why can't it be the Doctor? The reason he's a 15th doctor is to legitimize him. And the more you try and legitimize him, the less legitimate he is, right? And the further he is from um, being a doctor, sadly. I really thought it was going to work out. Schmuck that I was. JNT, what's this about JNT? The, eight, the mem mem uh, mem uh, memories of the 80th producer. Uh, seventh doctor designed with John Ashworth. That sounds interesting. Daleks and Davros, fact or fiction? Okay. Uh, let's see this. I'm scared. Okay, yeah, look, look at this, okay? I don't think this is innocent. How about in bloke in a dress doing a dress? It's fine, but, like, the, there's no room for innocence anymore. Will you stop pushing your weird shit on me? Oh, I love a bit of Fifi. I can't wait for that. Having a split job comes out. Uh, wow! Season one is Ed, and Christmas seems an age away. Too close to me, mate. Fuck me. Uh, and age away, so I could think. Uh, so I, uh, so I think I think I could have uh, been forgiven. I think the sun months will be quiet here at Do uh, Doctor Magazine Towers. Well, no, are you putting out a magazine? 
No, then they're not. Then you got to keep working, even though it's summer. I know it's amazing, isn't it? How wrong I was. What you literally just arrived in the industry. Uh, we got Doctor Who at the Proms coming up. We've had Shooting Gat was fifteenth Doctor debut at Man's Stores. Nobody cares. We had a spin-off frenzy uh, in San Diego. The news of the war between the land and uh, between land and sea. What a boring title. And for me, particularly uh, excited. I've always believed that your favorite Doctor Who generally depends on the area you watch with a child. So I generally resist answering the question, "Who's your favorite Doctor?" Because I I love them all. Okay, but I do have a particular fondness for John Pertwee and Katie Manning. Well, who doesn't? The image of sea devils emerging from the sea has stayed with me all my life. Well, I was I was too too young for that, and then too old for that when I got into when I was watching when I was you know a fan. Uh, earlier this week, I was privileged to chatting with Stephen Mansfield, a uh, sculptor. Oh, really? Principal sculptor at uh, Madison Souls. Wow, I, that's where he is now? Yeah, he, he made Fifi. He made a bunch of stuff. He made the Destroyer. Wow. That's really wild, right? That is really wild. Uh, while chatting around, I realized I actually have another favorite era of Doctor Who. The Spurs McCoy years. I'll admit, I, I, uh, I admit, I came to this a couple of years later than most. I came to it on VHS, really? I was introduced by my son to the world of Doctor Who. He would watch Paradise Towers. Ha That's not a great story. Survival, um, Battlefield, Happiness Troll, over and over again. And so would I. So when I came face to face with Stephen, uh, I couldn't stop gushing about this greatest creation's Fifi, the blood for thirsty uh, Stigarax. And the uh, uh, lap thing of Helen A, the, the despot of Terra Alpha. My feelings for the seventh. Okay, this is a good intro. Okay, you, you've won me over now, Jason, on this intro. Uh, my feelings for the seventh doctor are uh, every bit as strong as they are for the third. Nostalgia with my own childhood, uh, following the, by nostalgia of the childhood of my child. I, I do, I, I, I relate. Uh, again, I wouldn't really give this magazine to kids anymore. I think it should. I mean, look, I understand it's more for fans, but it should be open to kids. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, Doctor is really eternal. Just a few short months ago, I sat down and watched the latest season with my nephews, who are completely new Doctor. They hated it. They loved it. You lying cunt. Don't believe a word of it, right? I do not believe a word of it. The new magic moment where they uh, were open before my eyes and the memories were being created. I don't believe it. I think you made this up. Uh, our feelings for the Doctor who really do... Okay, leave me alone. I, I, I was with you until he just couldn't stop lying. Uh, I find this unit set just boring as hell. I don't really like it. Don't like it. Don't like a lot of this, right? Oh, I'm crying. Oh, I'm so sad. Look at me. Act. Yeah, he's a shit actor. I am sorry. He is a shit actor. We'll come back and do the co uh, column soon. Hey, look at... Oh, oh how marvellous. Leave me alone. Yes, we love the fans. Oh, fans. Fans are lovely. We love fans. We know we should go and touch grass. Please come back and watch Doctor Who. Uh, we promise to have more drag queens. Ah, oh, you blew it. Okay. And uh, Gubu Mabatha Raw, who apparently was in, uh, played um, uh, Martha's sister, is very, very hot. Uh, uh, Russell Tovey, is, this is his second or third time in Doctor Who? Jim Aroga and Alexander Devriant. Again, so not interested in this. Right? Genuinely not interested. Uh, can I hear a Christmas? I mean, like, this is just old, mate. I mean, like, it's, this is the problem of having a magazine, a print magazine, was the news is old, right? Doctor Who meets Sasquatch. Really? That sounds bad. Who's reading them? By Darren Jones. I'm not saying, it doesn't say who's reading them. BBC Talks have recorded uh, two new uh, 15th Doctor uh, Ruby stories, uh, both on TV and digital form. It goes to be by Neil uh, B uh, Bushnell, set in a uh, county down um, 1950. Okay, who's reading it? Oh, uh, read by Susan Triad. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, I like this. Time Lord Tuesday. I like the greatest show in the galaxy one. That's cool. Uh... Uh, Titan Merchandise have announced they will be releasing uh, something new each Tuesday reading from T-shirts, art badges, uh, okay, whatever. I like the Greatest Show shirt, right? It was okay. Uh, not getting anything else. What else have they got here? Look, 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 come back. Archive Award? 
What's this? The BBC Archive Project reported in Galifor- uh, Gallifreyan Guardian in, uh, uh, was it 597, and covered in the 2024 yearbook, has been nominated for an industry award. The story of Doctor Who from the archives allows the audience to delve deeper into the history than ever before. Deeper. Oh, you can feel the heat. Launched in November 2023, this brings uh, images, document, music to the radio to tell the story of the show from the very beginning. This is a uh, vulnerable, inv- uh, in the vulnerable, invaluable resource. Normally, you can find out further. I don't really care. I remember them coming up with this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I love the Crusade, right? I, I, I kind of like vinyl, even though I don't have a record player, but I quite like vinyl. Uh, this looks awesome. Doctor Who art uh, exhibit, right? The Museum of Somerset in Talton is hosting an exhibition of Doctor Who art until October 5th, including displays of artwork for Target Books, BBC v- uh, VHS releases, Big Finish Audios, uh, the Doctor Who annuals, uh, Doctor Who uh, magazine scri- uh, strips, uh, featuring the, all 15 Doctors. But here, check this out. They've got the uh, also New Adventures covers. Man, this is really cool. Right, this is really cool. I will, I will go there if I could. Oh, let's let's look at their bullshit today. So, what we're looking at, rogue. Uh, so they're pretending. It, fuck me. Even with all their pretense, they only got the three point eight nine million. Fuck me. Even with all their bull crappery. Oh man. And uh, now they're saying it's got four point three. Still shit. Right, that's still shit, mate. Uh, Legend of Ruby Sunday, uh, a little bit less. But just nobody watches this shit, right? And then people came back for Sutek. Uh, 3.92, yeah, 4.4. This is, these are pathetic. These are absolutely pathetic, right? And again, it, I, it, I think uh, Rogue was a real, real hit to us. What's this? We take a sneaky snoop inside the diary of Uber producer Julie Gardner as she joined Russell Davis on their road trip to San Diego Comic Con. Hmm. Yeah, that actually sounds like quite quite a good uh, story. But of course, no, everything's got to be about drag queens and being gay, right? I, I like the school uniform, Millie. Uh, that that works. But right, I mean, assuming she's a drag queen, she just looks like if she is, and it looks like she's just about to become one. And why does it look like Russell's got his hand up Miller's ass? I mean, don't get me wrong. If I had the opportunity, I would have my hand up Miller's ass, right? Uh, 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 yeah, if I was invited, of course. You know, what, yeah, what can I tell you? Uh, Galactic Forum. <laughs> Sute undoes damage, including, we're guessing, the destruction of Logopolis. Uh, it don't try and put you know, reason to any of this stuff. It's all bollocks, mate. It's all bollocks. What's that? That's a nice shot. It's with the uh, action figures. Quite kind of like the Alpha Centauri. Uh, what's, what's Tom doing? What is that shit? Uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Fine. Let's see, let's see what the, the data bench is like. So it begins. Oh, shall we do the A to So it begins. Uh, I can't too loud. A uh, chance to reclaim the earth. Yes. Uh, well, you, can, you, can you reclaim it? We, we'll rather have you than Starmer. Um, the oceans belong to the sea devils. And now the land is out. All of it. Oof. Uh, although it does get fairly busy this time of year. Uh, yes, it does. Yes, I like the Zarbi making sandcastles. <laughs> that is silly. Uh, I did like that. Hootube. Joy to the world, a sneak peek of what's coming this Christmas. Uh, I'm just so turned off by this whole era. Everything, everything just annoys me about it. Russell Davis and that's the spin of a Comic Con. Uh, uh, Russell, Shooty, and Millie are on full, full charm mode right they are like hi we love you all highlights on the launch of the 15th talks of sonic screwdriver uh a reaction from jess who uh loves uh loves the same and is watching us up for the very first time that's very cool do we know that channel i think i'm not i don't know i don't know her. i don't leap to mind uh, yeah, we like the uh, the uh, tribute to uh, William Russell. Uh, okay, T- jukebox in the TARDIS. I know, I, can't, I just can't stand it. Um, Torture Soho. Yeah, not so much. 
uh, was it Empire State of Mind? Uh, Wretched Half Life, Benjamin Cook will be great there. Shares the end of days with shooting out with Millie Gibson. Uh, I, I mean, I get I, I, there'll probably be stuff here we, we, we can troll through, right? I can't imagine. I can't imagine there's nothing no, we could, uh, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll pick out the good bits. I mean, the stupid bits. I, again, that looks so much better than this. Like, it just looks so much better. Um, there you go, a bit of Toby Selby, Sablon Glips. Yeah, love it, love it. And Shooty, he's not crying for once, but that's a whole new, uh, that's a whole new acting position for Shooty. I know, I know. It, it, might, it might probably some gay reference somewhere. I don't know what, uh, don't want to tell you. Fuck, what else is in Top 2 magazine? Um, doink. Yeah, more about this. And again, I just, this is not Doctor Who. This is Russell T. Davis's masturbatory fantasy. Oh, this must, are you still get Doctor Who magazine? I do. It's it's right. Just to prove it, because I say this every time I come on. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. I'll go and grab it. Hang on. I'm holding Hang something. On. I'm not sure if it was a thought. Let me tell you. She cried. Jigger, jigger. I thought it'd be on the shelf behind you with Rosie the Dalek. Uh, apparently not, right? Apparently Just so not. people don't think I'm an errant liar. Who, who doesn't put his money where his mouth is. I, I've been buying this every every issue for literally years and years and years. So, 19, uh, since 1981, I've got every yeah, issue of this. I, since my first issue, I think, was 97. I can't remember. Well, I've been buying them all since 81. I, I used to buy the odd copies of the weekly, and, and, I've, and when I was about 15, 16, I went and plugged all the gaps, so every issue that I hadn't got, I now have. So I've got a complete set. Of Doctor Who magazine, that's number six oh seven, I think, something like that. Right, right. Well, that did you get the uh, the backup strips uh, collection that came out? No, I have. I don't generally buy those, uh, and I, I, I do like sort them. of regret not doing it now. I like those. Uh, so they got the the new collection they got coming out. They got backup collection volume two coming out. I think in about a month. Yeah. But then a month after that, in November, they got the next collection. Is a real weird mishmash. They got um, the Tyrell Victorious Christopher Eccleston story, which was it was okay, but it was reasonably. It, thing about Tyrell Victorious, the, the, it didn't work because nothing connected. So you can read that on its own. It's its own thing, and it's okay. Yeah, they got somebody. They got a female general in there called Raslon. They never say if it's Raslon, Raslon. <laughs> I don't really care, right? But then they got the last two Jody strips. Are like, whoa, oh, the but then they got. <laughs> it's so exciting he's been snared everyone is, has he just frozen for me or has he frozen for you as well I could start singing couldn't I <laughs> look they sound all those strips I mean the, the uh, Time of Victoria stuff was instantly forgettable to me and I used to skip past the Jody stuff. It was bad enough watching her on TV. Never mind sort of reading the comic strips and hearing that voice in your head. So, yes, I didn't read any of those, to tell you the truth. But uh, I, I certainly would like... I regret not picking up those albums of the of the 70s and 80s stuff because uh, they'd remastered it all. They'd gone back to the original artwork and they'd rescanned it and remastered it. And in my view, you know, that stuff is... Comic strip art at its very, very best from a time where we in the UK were leading that field on 2000 AD and other things that Marvel UK were publishing too. They, there was a cross-pollination, wasn't there, of artists and writers across all of those things. So I know the rabbi is a massive fan of them and so am I. That's the thing about Pat Mills and all, all, all those types. Uh, what's his name? Dave, was it David Lloyd and uh, Steve? See... I'm on the spot now, so I'm forgetting all the names. But all those fabulous creators that worked on those original strips. So any, any chance they get to make those strips look the best that they can and ideally leave them in black and white. I think uh, they should resist colourising them, really, because they were meant to be read in black and white, those strips. Uh, we demand a song from Dan. <laughs> my dog and the cat and myself. Well, I'm sorry to disappoint all three of you, Eastlin, but uh, I've, I've, got, I've got nothing for the time being. You'd soon be uh, demanding compensation if I was to... <laughs> If I was to let rip with any requests, uh, sad face Steve says, yes, Dave Gibbons, of course, Dave Gibbons is, is, is was and remains the master uh, inspiration for the new Watchmen animation, which I think is out today. It was out yesterday. Has, has the rabbi spoken about that yet? Watchmen chapter one. 
written, well, adapted by J. Michael Straczynski and uh, the, the artwork, the animation looks um, just the right blend of the Dave Gibbons original strips and the kind of animation style we had on that um, Babylon 5 feature length thing from last year or sometime, wasn't it? So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to that quite a lot. Yes, I'm hoping that the rabbi is um, is in one piece and makes it back to the stream. But in the meantime, you're stuck with me. Who says what? Let's go. <laughs> Frozen rabbi, says Colin. And yeah, I hope, I hope he hasn't been attacked. Of course not. I'm sure it'll be along in a moment or two. Hello, Mark. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Uh, you know what, uh, Lonnie? Uh, I've, um, I think uh, Britain could perhaps benefit from some sort of constitution. I, I don't know. I think that would, I don't think that's on patriotic or anti-establishment to say that. I think it would actually help uh, the establishment. Uh, yeah, I think it probably would. What else have you been talking about while I've, while I've been out? <laughs> uh, yes, uh, thank you for having the whip round. For me there. Robert Jenrick, is that his name to uh, John Major Light there? Yeah, it doesn't inspire a great deal of confidence, does it? I have no idea who the other contenders are, but I heard that Pretty Patel was was there and, and people like that. At least she's got a bit of oomph. Um, it's a good way of finding out what I've missed when I can scroll back and see and see through here how the, what the rabbi's been talking about. So you, you've made it about halfway through Doctor Who magazine, has he? Of course, I could pick up the rest. <laughs> <laughs> and go through it manually. Oh, here he is. There he is. Fabulous Missy. stuff. Oh, oh we my God. I, I just slept up. So I, I, I was with my wife was home. I need somebody to uh, uh, reboot the router. Uh, yes. And uh, uh, yeah, she wasn't. So anyway, <laughs> what, what I miss? Well, we were, we were worried about you. I was just talking. I was trying to impress everybody with my knowledge of 2000 AD and Doctor Who weekly writers and artists and failing uh -huh. who miserably. <laughs> uh, oh, Steve Dillon. Wait, wait. Who, who, somebody said Peter Aaron says, said maybe Steve Dillon. Who are you trying to... Uh, you Steve trying to Dillon. That was the name. That was the surname I couldn't get to. I was trying to... If you remember the, those original backup strips, a lot of those names were all over those. When they, Alan Moore wrote several of them wrote, and they're always wrote, in black and white. Three or six. Here, one second. Down the tubes. Uh, we talked about this last night. But there we go. This is a new one, but see if I can find the one before the the one about the uh, backups. Oh, here you go. Well, this is one. Okay, this is one that's coming out. This is one that has uh, Adam Moore strips in it. And it's oh, called, Croton uh, on it. You're all right. You're all right. I think yeah, he invented Croton, right? So Mick Austin. Yeah. Uh, this is some great stuff. Dave Gibbons. David Lloyd, Mike, oh, Mike McCone, yeah, he did uh, uh, Junkyard, no, Junkyard Demon wouldn't be on this one. Yeah. Uh, Steve Moore, Paul Neary, John Pill, Gary Russell, oh, so I must have some later ones, Gary Russell. Uh, but yeah, yeah, so what they got, they got uh, Return of the Daleks, Throwback, oh, that was uh, written by Steve Moore, right, and that, that had uh, Steve Dillon, that, that was the first yeah. uh, thing of Croton, right, Um but if you go here, I think this takes you to quite. Oh no, that's the other. And that that's that's this one coming out right now. Yeah, uh, who who did the art on that? Yeah, this is Steve Dillon, um, Absalom Dark. I mean, just to this day, ah, uh, gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, uh, uh, don't expect that in Doctor Who magazine now. <laughs> uh, oh, I thought it's uh, uh, Miller's crying now in, in instead of the Doctor. Probably he's having a bit of a cry. But by the way, the big twist, she's nobody at all. Oh, God, Jesus. I like, I just <laughs> like, like, what? What are you thinking? I don't know, I don't know. That This was literally the most interesting thing of the year. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, then. An old bird in a big white coat. Yeah. old bird in a big white coat. So I'll say the same bit before you write. The problem is, you know, all these elements, well, you know, race, gender, colour, you know, it, everything has its uh, like a different shape culturally, right? They things fit together. To, so when you build something and it, and then you like change massive components of it, the blocks just don't fit together anymore, right? Yeah, I, I, yeah. Play, I played a clip of um, who was it? Um, the dr writer director of uh, Invasion of Time. Oh, I can't remember. Sorry, it was a Doctor Who name. Yeah, was and Anthony it, Reed? Anthony Reed. That's it. And it and they're talking about uh, writing Leela out by giving her a love interest. Like, well, you know, you can't really do love stories in Doctor Who. It doesn't really work at all. No. And he's absolutely right, right? It just, it, it, that rogue didn't work. It doesn't work at all. It, it worked, I think, one time and one time only with uh, Tennant and Rose. 
But I'll, then he got to leave it alone forever after that. Do you do you think that the girl in the fireplace worked? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, well, at the time I did. Now you watch it back. The last ten minutes, I just like fluff. Mm. It worked as a thirty-five minute episode. Uh, again, yeah, but yeah, you know, with that tenth Doctor, especially in that era, you know, like his, his sexuality was kind of awoken, aroused. So there was more, and it felt in character as well, right? Now, when they keep going back to it now, not at all, right? Again, should yeah. he try and get his Lego for an episode with Jonathan Groff? It just didn't work for me. Well, that yeah, that was very sexual, wasn't it? It wasn't. There was. Right. It wasn't romantic. It wasn't romantic at all. It wasn't a love story. There was no romance no, about it. Was, it. It, was about it was um. Shooting your boy was guy up the ass. That's yeah, <laughs> your boy was horny. That was yeah. that was Doctor as deep as it went. Fuck this guy up the ass. I'm just don't think that's Doctor Who style, <laughs> mate. Right? You know, like you know, look, I can understand Doctor Who imprinting his personality on on emerging consciousness on a computer. You know, um, uh, um, mm. you know, reading it as a uh, from the birth pains of a new species. I can't see it fucking it in the ass, right? That, that's just me, right? No. It's just me. Well, I was comparing yeah. it to the, the new Batman. And I said, if they're going to do that, this reinterpretation of Batman, they needed to change it, but you made it in, insanely traditional, right? If you had a black Batman, all the other stuff they did would actually work. Um, but the, the same thing here. Like, you're just not going to get a workable gay Doctor Who. I just not. Ah! It's even worse than this, right? And this was, like, epically awful, right? <laughs> and, and, oh, God. It was like, so it was so weak, wasn't it? So undercooked, not thought through at all because it was because it was obviously something they'd taken from the fan base. So it was inauthentic. Everything about it was completely phony and then forgettable. Yes. It, it, forgettable. I don't I don't remember this era at all. Thank God I don't really consider it a no. real era. But why does it need to look like dildo? Like like it's like what? Whose <laughs> idea was that? Let's have a look go at, at the end. No reason. Look uh, at the headline as well. It's going to be brilliant. Even, really that, even that's, even that's irritating. Thank <laughs> you for Jordy Whittaker, a man to go embark on a new series of adventures with the Doctor and Yaz. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we, we will be reading this at some point on my channel. Oh, thank you for um, She was so epically unconvincing as a Doctor. Like, like, just all the time. At no point, everybody else convinced me as a Doctor Moore, including uh, what's her name, Rosa Parks. She could be a better Doctor. That, so <laughs> epically unconvincing as a Doctor, right? In this epically unconvincing set. Oh, oh when you look man. back now and you think, God, oh, they made nearly thirty episodes of that, and you think at the time it was a very, it was a very slim era. In the end, it's it's a miracle they managed to make as much of it as they did. I'm amazed. I'm amazed. And again, the, the, towards the end, they kind of worked out what to do. Right. Okay. What shouldn't you do? Give a narcissist a life-size copy of himself. Right. Uh, <laughs> it's for me. Uh, it's like uh, yeah. the interesting thing, though. Uh, apparently, the chief sculptor is Paul is Paul Mansfield, who was uh, known for doing Fifi. Oh yeah, and, yeah, and, that's right. I didn't. He's a he's a chief uh, sculptor at Man of Two Swords now. He's I the main know. dude. Yeah. Yeah. He's the he's the wax man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and I like the, the TARDIS they have. The show gets further to get to the console than, than it seems. Yeah, that's that's been <laughs> they've done that in a rather half assed way, haven't they? But too early, you know, whatever. Yeah, everything is half assed because nobody really gives a shit, right? I mean, it's not like just nobody really gives a shit about this era at all. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm not running to Madam's Assault. So what's this? Uh, we try not to confuse. I'm sure that some schools, uh, a few years back, some children were saying that the Trevor Hills caused the Great Fire of London. I thought they did. Uh, what's this? And I think Man Survival was the last Doctor Who story produced by John Nathan Turner. On that day, uh, it began airing. He talked to Dean Cooper, reflecting on, Oh, this is interesting. Uh, uh, I, look, I find John Nathan Turner a fascinating person, right? I, oh, I yes. Book. Uh, what was it? The Endlessly. Well, it's, it, the book's had three or four different titles now. It's to called Totally Tasteless now, but right, originally right, it was right. called The Life and Scandalous Times of John right, Nathan I Turner. It was, I got it when it was, it was a different cover. I got it when it was Life and Scandal uh, The Life and Scandalous Times of John Nathan It's got a thing about upstairs downs as well. Um... Man, there's another version of it, Totally Tasteless? Let me look at Totally Tasteless. There's at least three different covers. 
two different titles. It's been across three publishers, I believe. Really? I, it's, it's a great book. I, re- I really love this here. Totally, I'll do totally tasteless. JMT is, is one of those, one of the probably a handful of people connected with Doctor who are, who are endlessly fascinating, and not even all of the doctors are endlessly fascinating. Uh, yeah, but he is endlessly fascinating. I, I've seen this cover before. That's the, that's the it, current one, yeah. It, it's, it's a great book. It will tell you everything you will need to know about what it was like making Doctor. In fact, they should really, uh, uh, I, I would love to see uh, Mark Gattis make a, a TV movie for like. <laughs> Uh, uh, for more adventures in time and space, right? Based on who this, would you cast as John Nathan Turner? Chris Biggins. Oh, you think he's not? He's pushing eighty now. I think he could be a bit, a bit oh, long right, in the tooth. Right. Have, uh, what's know. just? Uh, have you ever yeah. heard of? Have you ever heard of Justin Lee Collins? Name is Isabel, but I can't picture him. Remember do do a Google search for him. <laughs> uh, now he's a bit. He's a bit of a naughty boy. Um, he fell out of favour. He was cancelled. Uh, years and years ago. Oh, that's not saying well. Or, oh, wait, wait, wait. I was just saying Matt Berry as well, because I'm looking at this, I'm like, oh, it looks like Matt Berry. Matt Berry, oh, I know this guy, Alan Carr, and Just Lee Carr, oh, I know exactly. He, if he could act, yeah. Yeah, he if can he act. act. He, he was sort of driven off TV, but he, st- he still appears in the West End and things like that. He had a... He um, was found. Uh, well, I can't remember whether he was whether he went to court or not. But he was definitely cancelled from showbiz because he had an altercation with his partner at the time, and it uh, he didn't it didn't show his best side from what I remember. But I don't want to speculate because heaven knows where that could end up. Right, right, right. <laughs> uh, exactly, exactly. Look, as long as you, long long as you vote the right way, you're fine. That's just it. Uh, uh, and if you just brown up, baby, you'll be fine. Put a kefir on. They'll love you. Uh, um, <laughs> So yeah, so, uh, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I, this is I will go go over on the channel. His his great way of always staying in shot is use is pointing his finger. Brilliant. Because then you can't edit him out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he did it on purpose. It was so funny. Uh, it's just a fascinating and, guy. And you know, I've got lots of pictures of me at family functions as well in in the nineties in particular, and into the noughties where I'm doing that with family members. I'm pointing. And it totally works, right? It totally works. <laughs> I love that he's, he's way in front of uh, Peter Davison right now. <laughs> and honestly, uh, look, look, the great thing about John Nathan, like when he was firing on all cylinders, which is when he was appreciated, when he felt yeah. like people liked him, he was firing on all, all cylinders. Uh, uh, and when he, he felt people didn't like him, uh, uh, that that's when he, he was collapsing, right? Uh, the, I, the, the collapse of <laughs> who was completely because Eric Saywood couldn't stand him, right? And that, that's really what, where, where it all fell apart. But yeah, look at it. Like putting together the five doctors and get getting the budget for that special, making it happen, um, and then like w- w- working around uh, Tom Baker not being in it. Uh, uh, quite brilliant. And it, I, look, I love I, I love the five doctors. You love it too. Yes, yeah, so do I. I adore <laughs> every moment of it. I, I do love this picture. I don't think I've seen this one before. At least I haven't for a while. And do you think that it was Davison that was his, that was his star? Then he's got no problems at all obscuring him from the camera. Right. Exactly. exactly. I like how everyone's looking in a different direction. Including <laughs> 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 the waxwork of Tom. Getting the waxwork of Tom was get it pure John Nathan Turner. Right, that that's like solving problems. Yeah. Uh, fine. So what's this? The Bush Telegraph. <laughs> uh, uh, what's this? Melly Bush made a long way to return in uh, Doctor Who 2023, but uh, what, what what was she doing in the decades before? As Mad Auntie Mel here, Bonnie Langford and Jacqueline Rain discuss the elements they drew up uh, in the uh, uh, Death to the Star. I have no interest in reading this, but I like Jacqueline Rayner, uh, and I like I like Bonnie Langford. Okay, I, I will read the article. I have no interest yeah. in reading the book. I feel the same. I feel I feel similar. I, I think it's probably a, like a fine a, a Christmas book. You give it some, give it to the Doctor Who fan you know at Christmas. They kind of half read it while they're half right. cut, and it goes on the shelf. And it's just a nice thing for Bonnie to sign events and things like that. And I don't begrudge her that. Uh, but yeah, I, it's not something I'm uh, ridiculously excited about. Uh, I was just thinking. <laughs> okay, while you're saying that, I was just thinking. Do you think young, young Bonnie Langford was a, was a good shag, right? Because she looked quite, looked quite <laughs> well, she was that, very. I suspect she was energetic. That, that, uh, that's why I'm going to say no, because I'm, I'm too out, out, out of shape. Like, like, for, uh, <laughs> she, would, she would just scold me. I, like, You've got the stamina to keep up. Yeah, yeah. You know, I'll, be like, I'll, I'll probably be vomiting and falling asleep halfway through. 
<laughs> well, she'll continue. She'll finish because she's just a professional that she is. Never leave them hungry for more. That kind of thing. Okay, so this uh, the special they put out normally quite good. Uh, uh, Ian Levine was not happy about not being consulted on this. Uh, uh, Ian Levine, a frequent guest on on Type Forty. Uh, yes, yes, I, I'm I, supposed to be speaking to Ian again soon. So I don't, I didn't know about this because I've been sort of off radar. So I don't know what he's upset about and what they've done to him. Very upset. Okay, he's very upset for Ian Levine. <laughs> okay, he, he he's, he's got a reasonable point, but. Um, Man, I wish I, I wish I got the special editions and, and not the, the regular one. Because I don't know the, the, this regular. Actually, this issue isn't so bad, frankly. Uh, uh, blood, the blood on Camp Island. Oh, this is about the. the oh, you like this product design uh, uh, in the McCoy era. Oh, stealth from the Parliament. I mean, the thing about the specials, I try and get those specials as well. But to be honest, it's hot. It's very, very hard to get the magazine itself now. Uh, so the specials, you, it's a roll of the dice as to whether you'll ever see them in the shop uh, or not. I see. I, I, I would. If I wanted it, I so would what, order it. So, what did you say this article was about? This is the uh, production designer uh, for Delta and the Batman and some other stories. Oh, I guess cool. it's tying into the uh, season twenty-five coming out soon. Cannot yeah. wait! Oh, I cannot wait! I, I am <laughs> so up for that. Right. Yeah. Um, although this is season twenty-three, early October, uh, isn't it? That's a that's a great picture, by the way. Yeah, it's one of my favourite shots of the two of them. That one. Yeah, 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 really nice. I'm not keen on the umbrella. I never liked that umbrella. I preferred the cane one that he had in Paradise Towers. But because he kind of always had that umbrella, it right. never looks right if he's not holding it. It never looks like it's of that time unless he's Honestly, holding that. It, it, it worked from the moment he slid down from the Dalek uh, pursuit ship into yeah. Cole Hill School with it, right? That, at yeah. that point, it, 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 for me, it started to work, right? Proved its worth. Uh, yeah, exactly, exactly. And I that got the production design for uh, Dragonfire, which looks better on the set than it did on the show. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, yeah, I, I did, this, this is... It was, is that... What's his name? Is that Pat Patricia Quinn or is that... No, that's... that's uh... The guy from Porridge. Tony Asoba, yeah, from That's Porridge and Dempsey and Mapeace. Um, oh, you lucky people. You are to be Kane's mercenaries. Fine. So that, that, okay, that looks fun. <laughs> that looks fun. Who, like, I don't understand who would buy these books. Uh, no. I, mean, yards, I can see you getting that, no? Uh, I would never. At a push, I would. Oh, no, would I? No, I, I'm not looking to buy these adaptations of the current stories at all. I'm not interested in target books of new stories. I I did ha get Rose by Russell T Davies. That looked uh, good, but I didn't. I didn't. And it was it was good. It was a bit. It was overwritten and overthought, but it was fun. And there, there was more stuff of worth in there than not. And it's before he became completely captured by ideology. So. Yeah. It, 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 it was pacey. It, it had something. But the other stuff that they've chosen to bring it out in this new target line just doesn't impress me. I would yeah. recommend uh, Dark Contract, uh, there by Will Hadcroft in the bottom left-hand yeah, corner. Yeah, we love Will Hadcroft. So get that in. Is this a sequel yeah. to his other one or not? It's not a sequel, but it's um, it's the, just the next uh, the next one from Will. So the next one from the mind of the Resurrection Plant, I think he'd probably prefer. <laughs> All right, okay, because the re Resurrection Plant was, was, was good. I like that. Brilliant. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So again, a, 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 a interesting article marred with Jinx Monsoon. Yeah, again, be, be, before you came in, I, I was saying uh, what Doctor has really lost is innocence, right? Like you can't have innocence with a bloke who dresses as a woman and loses no. conduct up his ass. I, it's no. like it, it, it's, it's, and I think Doctor was better with that. Anyway, so June uh, Hudson was in uh, the Devil's Cord. Okay. That, yeah. yeah, everybody loves everybody loves June Hudson because she's yeah. again. I wouldn't describe her as Doctor Royalty as such, but she's got this sort of she's history of the there. show. I, I think she's up there now. Yeah. Why is this over here? This just annoys me. This should be at the front. Oh, this ah, yeah, this is annoying me. Uh, Jetty's own Jenna Coleman available on iPlayer. Uh, uh, but have you seen any reviews for the new Alien movie? Because it looks good. I'm just waiting to hear anybody's. Not a single one. I know that uh, uh, Sarah Graham is going to see it tonight. Uh, oh, I know she's because she's messaged me about it. 
I'm, I'd am i like to go and see it, but whether I will, whether I'll find the time, I don't know. I'd like to see it over the weekend, but I've got quite a lot to do, so whether uh, I will... By the or, way, um, Furiosa and uh, Kingdom of the Planet Apes are both out. Or, they're like 12 bucks or something on Apple. Digitally. Digitally yeah. to buy. Uh, they're both really good. I mean, Furiosa got a really bad rap. I loved it. It like it, it, you put you watch that back to back. It watch that first, then Thunder Road next. It's a great. It's like I'll, give, I'll give it a go. Uh, uh, and it really works. Like it really genuinely works. Uh, what's this? So uh, they got this thing: the Jetty, David Agila, and Mahomet also cast Paul McGann, Elizabeth Barrington, and Tim McHenry join the cast of Bookish. Uh, oh, that's Mark Gatiss's new series for um, for one of the cable channels. It's like a detective show. Okay, fine, fine. Uh, a bunch of people are dead. Sorry to hear that. Who's this? Uh, David Tennant, Phyllis Logan, and Fulton Mackay amongst the first members of the Paisley. I don't care. Leave me alone. Uh, when I see David, uh, David Tennant, just, how, like, how have they all given Fulton Mackay an award when he's been dead for 30 years? Well, I, I guess he could, couldn't protest then. That would be. I remember this. Do you remember when, when the, the, the ghost, not the, it was. Uh, oh, the Paradise of Death. Was, Paradise of Death, and it wasn't very yeah. good, and it was at least something, right? Uh, is that uh, thirty years? Man, is that well, thirty-two years, thirty-one years? Uh, why is she there? Like, like, well, like, oh, she infects everything all the time. Is it Go compulsory away. to put a picture of that ridiculous woman? Wherever they, do so. they just have some space? Just put a picture of Jodie in there to remind people she existed and she happened. Yeah, yeah, we're all trying to forget about it. Uh, worlds apart, I don't care. And this now this picture looks like Shooty's going to molest me, okay? At this point, I think he's reaching my balls, okay? That, that, yeah, that's where, where, where is that finger going, exactly? exactly, where? <laughs> exactly. And why does it smell of twiglets? Don't tell and me. And why? And also, mate, why? Every year, there's at least one, sometimes two, of these digital games that come out. They've all got really bland titles like that. They all look largely the same. Can anybody keep track of this crap? Is it just a... They must do, otherwise they wouldn't keep making them. That's what I keep telling myself. Uh, but, uh, I think oh, well, there's like a contractual obligation. Uh, Tom Biggs is, is Barnett's a bit weird there, but okay, never mind. I don't care. Oh, God, it's got by generation, leave me alone. <laughs> uh, and then, man, I, like, I, I just like the, 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 the falling quality of the comic strip. Is just, These are just awful. I'm sorry. And I don't want to rank on Mike Collins. But like this is not his best work at all. But I hope he's being paid well. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, not not for me. Space babes again. Listen, leave oh, me alone with your. Oh no, more drag queens. Yeah, now this is from Gallifrey One, and I get, I get look. It, why can't this be a general audience show? Which means not having your weird closet pervert sex stuff every, every five pages. Right, I, I'm sorry. It's you want to be, you want to do whatever sex thing you want. Go ahead in privacy. There's no need to have it like front and center of Doctor Who. Like we were fine. This was the cabaret was always was, was always you know a bit bit raunchy, right? But they kept it themselves. They didn't splash over Doctor Who magazine. Now they're like, oh yeah, more of that. Oh, well, absolutely. you you and I, you and I both know, and I, I imagine plenty of people watching this do remember. That uh, around 17, 18 years ago, there was a Doctor Who porno made. We all know that it was made. Uh, we've all seen pictures of it. Wait, which Doctor was it? It was a guy in a in a dark leather jacket. So he's meant to be Christopher Eccleston. I haven't seen that. I saw I saw the uh, pictures from the David Tennant one because I the the, uh, the redhead play. Oh no, it was it wasn't David Tennant. No, there was a David Tennant one, but there was also a Matt Smith one because I remember the What's redhead that? playing. <laughs> Uh, 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 what's the name? Uh, Amy. Oh, okay, well, I've only I've only seen the one. Uh, it was well, gifted sorry, to well, me one I, one birthday. Oh, I think I still have this. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, but wait, for wait. example, we all know that that was made. We remember it coming out, all that kind of thing. But Doctor Who magazine never covered it, cover it. it. And it's right. and to me, it's the same thing because it would have been inappropriate. It's adult entertainment, and so is drag. By the way, speaking of inappropriate... You don't, you don't recognise me. Is it... Is it the hair? 
no one is watching this season anyway. Well, what can you do? So that that was another Doctor Who porno. <laughs> <laughs> now you've said it. I do remember seeing that clip. Yeah, uh, but you saw it, you saw it on, on, on my channel. No, probably. Uh, <laughs> like, I, like, this is no place in Doctor Who magazine, right? It it really doesn't. Uh, Magician's Apprentice. I, well, this is probably one of my favorite Capaldi stories. I, I again, everybody hates him coming out of the tank. I love it. Right, <laughs> I love the pre scene in uh, in on Scaro. I, I really, I genuinely love it. Uh, the only thing I don't like is Davros opening his eyes at the end. I'm like, no, no. Davros doesn't have any eyes. What the hell are you did? Stop. Oh, other than that, and Colony Saf should have been the the Mara. Like, why wasn't Colony Saf the Mara? That would have made so much more sense. Yeah, I, do you know what? I blocked a lot of this out. I think I can't remember. Okay, I, Colony Saf yeah. is the uh, is the big snaky thing. Oh, okay. Do you remember? That was no, a really don't. good effect. I don't remember at all, so I'll have to go back and watch it. Okay, fantastic villain, right? Absolutely fantastic yeah. villain. Uh, was like working in the employ of Davros. If it oh. Was really... One second. I've got to find you a clip now. Because <laughs> like, this was actually very, very good. One second, Doctor Who. Uh, Twelve Doctor. Uh, Magician of Princess, don't you? Oh yeah, so I like I like the the whole oh yeah the hand mines man. Yeah, I like I like that. Yeah. Oh, here it is. I don't remember any of this. Into a bar. You see, it's like just sl slithering in. Right, so oh, it was a dude that. made up of snake of a snake. Right, right, right here, but when he here when he. Uh, Links himself back together. It's really good. One sec. Where is that? Effect? I bet I haven't seen this for ten years. Yeah, again, I really like this episode. Right? I, 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 I really highly rate it. Oh, is this it? Was he leaving there? All oh, right, he's breaking with the snake. Oh, they must do it at the at the end of this whole sequence. Oh, right, right, right. Here it is, where he's on Sarn. And again, I thought all well, this stuff really, really worked well. Uh, was that the beginning of this or the? Uh... You find Davros, creator of the Daleks, Dark Lord of Scara. Ah, I can't find it now. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get a copyright jab. Uh, but, I get, I get anyway, the general gist of it. I really like the story, right? I You've really made, like me, the... made me made uh, me want to go back and watch that uh, that stuff now. Yeah. Yeah, he, man, it's like, again, and the, our, our uh, expectations have been lowered so much. <laughs> you know, uh, have you listened to this on, on poor old Big Fish? No, oh. no, I have, I have got it. I, you told me how good it was. So I went and got it. It's yeah, really good. Best one they've done in years. Well, obviously, with uh, with the app being down. <laughs> right, right. Although I got my app working, but apparently they're taking the app down and bring putting back the old one again. Uh, so I hear. Uh, Conspiracy of Raven. Eh, this uh, I like this range, but this is the weakest one of of, of the range that, thus far. Um, if it didn't have important like bridging information, I would say skip it. Uh, look, I do like uh, um, what's his name? Uh, is it David Trout? Mike Michael Trouton. Michael Trousers take on the second yeah. fantastic. I really so that's always pleasant. Just this this set doesn't really hold together that well. Um, I don't know about the Tom Baker and the uh, Tortured So no interest. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with these on a uh, uh, maybe maybe Saturday I'll go with these. Are you, are you tempted to get the 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 talking books of the of the seventy three yards and Rogue and all that nonsense? I would rather have a fifth book up my ass. I, no. <laughs> Sounds awful, right? Um, sounds like the, the, no, I have zero interest, right? Absolutely zero interest. Um, the David Banks is back in 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 the. They're doing another uh, six doctor thirtieth anniversary one, but the last oh, one was. Okay. Hack, I'm staying away from it. I'm sorry. 
Um, but I do like uh, they, they got. Uh, he looks pretty good for David Banks, doesn't he? For like four yeah, years yeah, he looks like he's having a good time reconnecting with Doctor Who fandom as well. He's been to a few things lately, hasn't he? Right, Conventions right, right. and signings and things. I do like his. Uh, uh, yeah, I do like his cyber leader. The dog. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bernie Starnfield meets uh, in the. Uh, uh, meets a uh, unisexual soldier clones in the Eternity Club. It's just not on Who's who's writing this? Um, James got. I don't know. Like I, I've I've got every other um, Bernie Somerville release. I'm just like, am I am I staying on the train? Holy crap! When was she in Doctor Who? Okay, second season. The most crazily hot woman I've ever seen. Oh yeah, she was gorgeous. Right up the long ladder. That, that that I remember the name of the episode. Just could she gets a kit off a little bit, right? And you go, ah, now she is. Uh, uh, yes, uh, yeah. She makes my car, my quark, uh, uh have total destruct absolute. That's me, baby. So she's in <laughs> seven. Um, okay, whatever. Oh, she was in uh, something about the tarot release. I didn't get that. Uh, Susan C. Uh, Peter Angelis helps the doctor's granddaughter. Navigate the time war. Uh, yeah, I've, I've actually pre-ordered that whenever it's going to come out. Why are you showing us this, you morons? They just have no idea, right? They just have no idea. They're never adapting that as part of this book. No, long time reason can expect they have a lot of deja vu in September with Puffin Books, a new edition of the 50th. Yeah, it says there, look, it's preceded here by a new prose adaptation of Destination Scarrow. <laughs> Uh, I bet it's written by Russ and Dick Rusty Davis. Oh, fuck off. How uh, to misread a room. Yeah. That's been this <laughs> entire era. How to misread a room. Uh, and annuals are always gen- uh, gen- uh, generally shit. And uh, this one looks... Yeah. Okay, it looks like an annual. I can't, can't really say anything about that. Um, doink. Looks, I tell you what, that looks a bit more imaginatively sort of designed than annuals have been in recent years. Looks, yeah, uh, yeah, I agree with you. That's a, that's a fair point. Loose ends, uh, Jonathan Morris and uh, Roger Landry. I will read that. I mean, anything with a candy man, I'm happy to see. What, what's this about? Uh, the candy man speaks. I guess the guy who played the that candy must be man? an interview with Dean Hollingsworth. Was it who played the candy man? I, I, how you remember that is beyond me, right? Uh, uh, absolutely beyond me. I can't remember anything about the Capaldi story, but 37 years ago, yeah, yeah I'm your man. <laughs> I love, I, I, I love having this control. I really can't wait for it to come out. I had uh, no interest in that. So let's let me just evaluate this issue. Is is this one? How many pages in this would I read? Right, actually, there's quite a lot I will pull out from this one. I'm totally looked- going to read the interview with Jody. That, I mean, it that, looks. That- it looks like a proper mixed bag, which is what a 60-year-old TV show. You want a yeah. good eclectic mix of stuff in. And I can tolerate a couple of pages on Whitaker for the for the uh, for the people who are uh, well, who've just yeah, received a head injury. I, 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 I actually agree with you. I do agree with you. Um so yeah, I, look, they got stuff about the new I think now the new series is in the rear view mirror. Uh, the, the, and Everything else is coming up. It's looking yeah. more like, yeah, they've got the 80s stuff that I'm interested in, Bonnie Langford, more 80s stuff. Okay. I would totally uh, buy it on digital. <laughs> like, it costs a fortune, doesn't it? Uh, it's, yeah, it, it's seven ninety nine dollars uh, every issue now. £7.99. Bloody hell, I must be mad. <laughs> oh, my God. I pay a lot less. Hang on, let's have, how much is it in pocket bags? Sorry. I have considered going digital with it, but it's it's just I've been buying it since I was six. Well, it's again, very... that's that why 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 I went digital, but here we <gasps> Yeah, fair point. Uh that's it, let's go there. If I do Doctor Who magazine, uh, Doctor Who. So twelve uh twelve months for fifty six pounds. I think I get it quarterly. Right, so uh, four twenty three an issue that that I can cope with, right? That that yeah. that makes more sense, right? That is quite that is quite a saving when You're you put right, it like that. Right, right. Seven quid does it come with a hand job? Are you crazy? <laughs> that- <laughs> My name's Peter Beck, and the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. 
Yeah!